What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So it looks like now heading into September, there are gonna be quite a few gaming showcases there with some big time announcements. And yesterday we had maybe one of the largest ones announced for September with Disney now showing up with their own gaming showcase. We'll talk about that here today. Also, we are gonna be going over some more evidence that Sony could continue their push into PC gaming with even the PlayStation Network getting involved. And we're also gonna be talking about Microsoft as they they've basically admitted what we already knew. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with God of War Ragnarok. There was a new trailer that was released yesterday, more or less summarizing the entire God of War 2018 plot line to kind of get people caught up for God of War Ragnarok. It was done sort of in a fun, like, storybook fairy tale setting with, uh, with a person kind of leafing through a book, going over all of the plot points, but not getting too specific to where you would still miss out on different things in the game if you didn't actually play through it. Just really a rough overview with some of the cliff notes here. And I saw some people not happy because there's still no gameplay technically in, in, this, uh, in this trailer. I'm just kind of wondering if, I mean, we're, we're to the point now where they're obviously closely guarding uh, some of the stuff in God of War Ragnarok and uh, still a lot of questions for it. Maybe they just, they don't, they can't really show much. Otherwise they could spoil parts of it. I, I don't know. But I mean, at this point I'm already sold on God of War Ragnarok because God of War 2018 was so good and I want to see what happens next. At this point, I'm just trying to get to November, start playing it. Also, we had one of those really, really early announcements around a game that's in development. We can see this posted over on Private Division, where they say, Private Division, a publishing label of Take-Two Interactive Software, today announced they have signed a new publishing agreement with Weta Workshop, best known for their work on Middle Earth for Lord of the Rings film trilogy. They say, we, we are thrilled to partner with Weta Workshop to publish a game set in such an extraordinary and celebrated universe. It's a privilege to create a new game set in Middle Earth, especially one that's so different from what fans have played previously. They say this title is an early development and does not yet have an announced release date. It is expected to launch during Take-Two's fiscal year, 2024, so we're about two-ish years out, but I mean, they'll, they'll have like targeted release windows, and I mean, let's face it, we all expect things to get delayed out a bit further. This could just be optimistic on their part, fiscal year uh, 2024. Uh, but no other details really to go off of there other than it's gonna be a very different experience, but hey, it's always fun to see that there is another game in development with the Lord of the Rings franchise. I saw some people wonder if they were gonna use the Nemesis system. That's actually uh, part of WB that wouldn't necessarily be used here, and they say it's very different, so we'll see what they have in mind. Oh, and we had some news come out from Nintendo's development headquarters. We can see this post up on Nintendo Everything, where they say NHK is reporting that a fire broke out earlier today at Nintendo's development headquarters in Kyoto. Thankfully, the situation is under control and there were no serious injuries. Now they do say some of the desks and chairs in the room on the third floor were burned, but there were no like injuries. All employees are safe. They were trying to figure out what happened here exactly with police and fire departments starting an investigation. It's thought that it may have started via a device that was being charged. See, I, the Switch Pro is just is very, very strong, obviously, from what we're seeing. Nintendo's having a hard time containing it. I mean, look, I this could have been an entire Nintendo Pro segment. So, hey, I let you off the hook for that one. You're welcome. But uh, good to hear that everyone's safe and, and no major issues here, other than just, I guess, some chairs and stuff being burned. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get to the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Disney's big gaming showcase that's being lined up for next month. We can see this posted up. This is the press release that Business Wire uh, posted up on their site where they say, live from D23 Expo, Disney is streaming the Disney and Marvel games showcase to fans worldwide on Friday, September 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Now, they'll have it streaming on, on, on the usual platforms, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch. So you can kind of tune in and, and check it out on whichever one 
you want to there. They say the digital showcase will feature incredible new content from Disney and Pixar games, Marvel games, Lucasfilm games, and 20th Century games. In addition to all new announcements, fans can expect new reveals from titles including Disney Dreamlight Valley, Marvel's Midnight Suns, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and a sneak peek at the upcoming Marvel Ensemble game from Skydance New Media. Okay, first let's start with the games that they just listed there. Disney Dreamlight Valley, I sure they can I guess show whatever they want there, but Marvel's Midnight Suns, I'm kind of expecting a, a new character reveal. And then maybe just some gameplay for it. That got pushed into next year. Uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. I mean, they can go anywhere with this one. They could pull in maybe some of the uh, some of the other movies that aren't included here yet, like kind of the the one-offs or the spin-offs or something. They could bring in as additional episodes. But the one that I'm extremely curious about is is Skydance New Media. Now, the reason I'm curious about this is, one, they did announce that they were collaborating with Disney for both a Star Wars game and a Marvel game, but this is this is the studio with Amy Hennig as the president. So I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're doing here with Marvel, because obviously you think of Amy Hennig, you think of like Uncharted, Visceral Games, how they were going to create a Star Wars title that got canceled and, and all these different things. So we kind of expect this to be a narrative driven, maybe single player experience. I mean, we'll see. It depends what they want to do with the, the Marvel property. They really haven't given us any indication as to what this is going to be other than a completely original story and take on the Marvel universe. So I'm curious if this is going to be them focusing in on a single character or intellectual property and they just build out an entire game from that. I mean, could this be something like uh, Daredevil? Because we know that there is a new Daredevil series coming up in, in the next phase with Marvel and maybe they want to have a game next to it. This initial partnership was announced uh, right at the end of 2021. So it has been almost a year since that was done. So, I mean, I guess they're about ready to show us what they're working on. But really after that, it's anyone's guess. We know that Disney basically said, hey, it's, it's we're opening up here. If you have an idea for a game or, or a franchise that we own, whether it's Star Wars, Marvel, or anything else, just go ahead and pitch it to us and we'll go from there. And we've seen them be much more active, especially with Star Wars, where Ubisoft is getting a shot at it and everything. Uh, so I'm, again, curious what they have in mind here uh, with, uh, with Skydance and a Marvel intellectual property. But... It seems like they're confident enough to have an entire gaming showcase at D23. So I'm expecting some pretty big reveals and September is really shaping up to be almost like the E3 that we didn't get in June because we're hearing obviously about Ubisoft Forward. We know uh, Capcom's gonna have a couple of live streams around Tokyo Game Show and then Tokyo Game Show itself. There have been rumors around there being a Nintendo Direct that month, maybe a Sony showcase. So there's a lot of things that could be happening here in, in the next several weeks, but certainly exciting stuff. And I guess uh, in September, we'll start to hear much more about all these different games. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft and Xbox essentially admitting to what we all already know, and that's that the PS4 like vastly outsold it. The, the thing that made it a bit difficult to follow is Microsoft just stopped reporting Xbox One sales figures. I mean, presumably because they were falling so far behind, but obviously now they're not as interested in the console numbers because they're more interested in the Game Pass subscription numbers, which they've kind of stopped reporting that one as well. Uh, anyway, in all those court documents that are flying all over the place with different regulators, seemingly gravitating around this Activision deal, uh, there was one line that was pointed out and started to make the rounds and create some uh, conversation online, we'll say. We could see this posted up. This is over on Game Luster. So the information can be found on page 18 of the Microsoft court papers dated August 9th, 2022. The translated line reads, Sony has surpassed Microsoft in terms of console sales and install base, having sold more than twice as many, more than the Xbox in the last generation. Again, this isn't shocking, because last I had seen for the Xbox and some estimations, it placed it somewhere in the 50 million unit range. And if you look at the PS4, Sony has now stopped reporting numbers for it because it's they're, they're basically done selling it. But it came in at 117.2 million. So you figure if it was like half, like what, 55, 56, something like that million. 
Uh, that's about what the estimations were putting it at. And it, it just shows, wow, how badly they hurt that system out of the gate with Don Matrick having interviews like, if you don't like it, buy an Xbox 360. We were questioning if we were going to have used games at all on the platform and if we would always have to have this camera hooked up in our living room. And it's just the marketing absolutely crushed Xbox at that point. And Sony leaned into it and hey, it, it worked out for them that generation. But there you have it. We basically have Microsoft admitting to something we all already knew. The PS4 absolutely crushed the Xbox One last generation. Next up, let's talk about PlayStation and PC, which seems to be accelerating with a lot of these different releases like Spider-Man Remastered, and obviously we're gonna have Last of Us Part One at some point, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection. But as these games hit PC, people go through the different files and find some pretty interesting things. For example, in the Spider-Man Remastered files, you can see this one post up over on Twitter. This was from Tamp, who noticed that if you look through the text for it, it says, if set in, in co-op, character two will see this text. It says debug only currently, but then they have another line of this, and it sort of appears to be them uh, playing around with the idea of co-op in Spider-Man. There was also uh, some talk uh, around like multiplayer outside of, I guess, just co-op forward and interesting some of the stuff I guess they were playing around with there and who knows, maybe this is stuff that'll find its way into Spider-Man 2, hey, that D23 Expo is coming up or maybe Sony with their own presentation in September. But something else that was noticed in the files for Spider-Man has to do with PSN integration, which we've talked about before how Sony would maybe have their own launcher, but we can see this over on VGC. According to the game files, which have been viewed by VGC, Sony could be planning to allow PC players to link their PlayStation Network accounts to specific games and offer in-game bonuses as rewards for doing so, while neither Marvel Spider-Man nor any of the other PlayStation Studios PC game currently allows connectivity with PSN accounts, Spider-Man's files contain multiple references to PSN account linked and PSN linking entitlements. Furthermore, references in Spider-Man's files to level cap extras in relation to PSN linking bonuses appear to suggest that developer Insomniac was either experimenting or planning to give players extra skill points for linking their accounts. And this could be a way that Sony tackles the idea of getting PC players to sign up for PSN in the short term. I think eventually they will have a launcher that will probably bring in trophy support and this collectible stuff with PlayStation Stars, but in the meantime, if you are playing on PC and you have a PlayStation Network account, you could sign in and get maybe even, as they were saying, skill points for your character in the game. That might have been pushing it a bit far, like far, and maybe that's why that's not in there now. But I could certainly see the idea of maybe there are trophies that are specific to the PC version that you get if you sign in with your PlayStation account. Maybe they do lean into this PlayStation Stars thing, and if you sign into PSN on one of these PC releases, you get a little digital statue or collectible uh, to add to your account. I do believe the end, the end goal will be a launcher, but I wouldn't be shocked if like by the beginning of next year, they start talking about going back to some of these games, signing in with PSN and you get all kinds of interesting things in the game. And then also outside of it as part of their overall PlayStation ecosystem. Because remember at the end of the day, that's what all these companies are looking for is engagement and users inside of their overall ecosystem that they have built out. That goes for Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft because they all talk about it with their investors during their fiscal reports. This would be a way for Sony to get all the, or most of the PC users, I would say, maybe a bit more interested in PlayStation Network. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new arcade cabinet that was announced by Arcade One Up. It looked pretty cool initially, but well, there's a bit of a catch here. We can see this over on their website. That's right, NFL Blitz Legends. It's currently posted up for $600. You pre-order and it ships in early October. They have a few different games here, NFL Blitz, NFL Blitz 99, and NFL Blitz 2000 Gold Edition. And initially I'm looking through this, it looks pretty good, right? The first thousand orders even will receive a limited edition NFL Blitz Legends cap. You go down to some of the features, a 49-way joystick, Wi-Fi, network live play, 
Four player controls, there's a 17 inch LCD monitor, a light up marquee, it's officially licensed, and even online leaderboards. And I'm going through this, I'm like, all right, cool, this would be great for NFL Blitz fans. And then you get down to one section that uh, it was, yeah, it's a bit frustrating. I mean, I can kind of understand what happened here, but anyway, remaster for 2022 to support the NFL's current player health and safety initiatives, a specific set of tackles. And after the whistle hits were removed or edited in the remastered versions of NFL Blitz, Blitz 99 and Blitz 2000 Gold Edition, while maintaining the level of excitement in the original games, they go on to say our remastered version has over 84% of the different hits from the original Blitz, so do not worry, all of the fun chaos is still there. It basically is them trying to uh, salvage the situation here and reassure you that it'll still be fun. The thing with Blitz to me though, is it was always so over the top and so unrealistic that it's just, it's not believable at all, right? So basically when a play would end, you could still run around and just tackle people and like jump 20 feet across the field and field and spear someone. And it was just a little extra thing uh, to add in to Blitz. And uh, you know, it was fun. And uh, there are moves you can do, I'm sure where you're like suplexing them and, and all. It's been a while since I've played these uh, different Blitz games. But the fact that they had to remove some and take away the after the whistle hits, clearly that's something they had to give up to get the licensing from the NFL, who's uh, trying to be much more aware of player safety. But it just seems weird in like a video game that you technically have access to. Otherwise, you have to do a bit more. You got to jump through more hoops than just buy this arcade machine. But I don't know. Is it just me? Did anyone else look at Blitz and was like, this is... This is it right here. This is the most realistic NFL experience I've ever had. Now it's just always off the wall and goofy. But nonetheless, if you were someone who really wanted an arcade machine uh, with all the diff or these different Blitz games on it, there you have it. $600 and about 84% of the hits apparently. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, were you able to play the PT demo that was released eight years ago on PS4? Look at that, 71% of the voters so they've never had a chance to play it. 18% said yes, but I don't have access to it anymore. Only 11% still even have access to it at this time on their system. If you had like left it downloaded on your system, you were able to still play it. But I mean, if your PS4 broke down or anything there, it's uh, you weren't able to get it back even by redownloading or anything. And if you look on uh, on eBay, people still to this day sell the PS4 with PT demo installed. And it actually goes for quite a bit more than you would think, certainly more than the PS4 is worth now. But yeah, it is certainly a shame to see that game basically launched, lost to time. I say game is a demo, but for a lot of people, that just that experience could be described as a game for them. It was certainly unique, it was certainly Kojima, and I would have been really curious to see what he had in mind for the entirety of the game, since that was such a small slice of it. What else were we gonna do beyond that hallway? And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Jimmy saying, the THQ Nordic Showcase actually impressed me more than any show this year. The AA games model is pretty much what regular games were back in the PS2, Xbox, GameCube era. I miss those days. Yeah, games are getting more and more expensive and they're taking longer and longer to create. We're looking at like six, seven, even eight year development cycles and hundreds of millions of dollars. So yeah, there's a lot of gaps between those releases. I like the idea of having these, I guess they're double A, single A is, is what, indie? Then we have double A, like what we're seeing here with THQ Nordic, those titles. And then you have the, the big triple A games, right? From uh, from Sony and Nintendo, like Breath of the Wild 2 and, and all that, right? But I like the idea of still having these smaller games that don't cost an arm and a leg to create because we get them more frequently. And at times they'll leverage older intellectual properties that we maybe remember from that era and remaster or remake them in some way and bring them up. So I like what I'm seeing here from THQ Nordic and Embracer Group kind of approaching the gaming industry in this way because they'll still have something like Darksiders 4 that's that'll be like a closer to AAA kind of style game with its budget, I guess, but like still having all these smaller titles released pretty rapidly is nice to see. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was Disney's gaming showcase being set up for next month. What are you hoping to see there? And then also what about Xbox just admitting basically that yes, the PS4 outsold that Xbox One by 
quite a bit. And then NFL Blitz, that arcade machine. Are you interested or them pulling back on some of the hits, turning you off from picking it up? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.